as of version 5.4, which just recently came out, native script apps have HMR turned on by default. HMR, of course, being hot module replacement. Let's take a closer look at what was added and the developer experience before and after HMR. And we'll do this in native script view, native script core, and native script angular. Let's do this. We're all used to the live sync workflow by now while developing native script apps, but HMR just brings a whole new level of speed to the development experience. And I use the word workflow because I'll explain it in a second. Let's jump into the code and take a look. Now here I've created three apps and one is native script core, one is native script view, and one is native script angular. And we'll take a look at each one and how it behaves with a new HMR behavior. When you create a native script app now, this is a core application by the way, Notice the blue color here. And here's the app running here in the simulator. You get this nsconfig.json file now. And here it says use legacy workflow and it's set to false by default when you first create the application. So what is this workflow? Workflow means a couple of things here. The first thing it means is, are we gonna be using bundling and minification by default? Or are we not gonna use bundling and minification and we're just gonna use the old workflow or the legacy workflow with native script angular apps and with native script core apps the default used to be that webpack was not involved webpack was optional step but now webpack is involved and not only that it's on by default so when you create the app this says use legacy workflow is set to false if this was true this would use the old workflow without webpack being turned on Okay, so that's the first thing that it means. The second thing it means is that HMR is on by default if this is set to false. So HMR and Webpack go hand in hand. HMR is actually a Webpack concept. All right, so let's see how this really behaves, shall we? Here is the app running right now. I'm gonna hit tap and that works. Let's alter some code. So here in main view model, I'm gonna change this counter. Instead of 42, I'm gonna change this to 46. And let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. The app did not restart even though we changed the code file and we just have 46 taps left here. If I change this number again to 49, 49 taps left. Let's change the message to taps lefts. I'm, I guess I must've changed that earlier. Clicks left. All right, so you can see that that's pretty darn fast. Now let's take a closer look at platforms. This is the output. This is where the JavaScript gets bundled. So here is our project. Here's the app folder. And here you can see a bunch of JavaScript files and also these JSON files. The main bundle file, this is your application. This is all of your application, all the JavaScript code, all the CSS and all the markup all bundled together. Now, when we make some kind of code update, you get this hot update in here, this JavaScript file, along with the JSON file that describes the update. You can read more about this procedure here at this URL, webpack.js.org, hot module replacement, just find that section and you can see how it works. And if you're curious, you can take a look at this. Now here you can see in the compiler, you get two files output. One is the updated manifest file, which is a JSON file. And the other one is updated chunks. So you're just getting that chunk that was updated, the JavaScript file that was updated. So in our case, we've updated only the view model. So we're not going to get this bundle file completely rebuilt. We're only going to replace just one little chunk. So if we take a look at the last hot update JavaScript file right here, you can see that this file is much shorter and it only contains the main view model right there. This may not actually be the last one that we did. These are not ordered by date, but some random ID. All right, so that's the legacy workflow turned off and that's the default. Let's see if we turn the legacy workflow back to on. Uh, this won't, of course, refresh. I need to restart the application. So I'm gonna TNS run iOS. Notice I did not provide the bundle flag and you get this message. It says you are using the legacy workflow, blah, 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 blah. Native script six is coming where the legacy workflow will not work anymore at all. And Webpack workflow will be the only way of building apps. So get ready for that one. And our app is done building. Okay, so there's the application. You can see that it's working just the same way. But if I change this from 49 to say 39, 
you can see that there's a build process that happens in the background and the app restarts. So that's the old workflow. And I'm sure you're used to that by now. Let's take a look at Angular. Ah, you like that? It's now red. Okay, let's keep going here. So I'm going to start this off. I'm going to terminate that one and do TNS run iOS on this Angular app. Now, right now on my Angular app, if I take a look at the nsconfig.json file, which is also there, and it's the same exact file, you can see that use legacy workflow set to false. This is the default. And if we take a look at the output, notice I did not provide the bundle flag, yet we are still getting that Webpack bundle working on this. So there are the bundles, they were created. And here is our application, which is the Angular template. Basically, this has two pages. One is the list of football players, and the other one is the detail page. So let's go into the code and make a little change and see what happens. First, let's check out the HTML. So right over here in this label, instead of that period, I'm going to change that to a comma. Okay, so you can see that the app did not restart. However, we lost our navigation state. We didn't end up being on the details page like I thought it would have happened. Um, but anyway, the app restart was really fast. Um, you see that comma in there, but we did get navigated back to the list. And I don't know if that's something that they're going to fix or not, but uh, hopefully that will be fixed. Anyway, this is still a huge, huge improvement. Let's change something in the code and see what happens. I'm going to do a const a equals one. Now, before this would re-trigger rebuild. Let's see what happens now. Well, <laughs> I guess nothing happens because HMR did his job and didn't restart the app. If we take a look at the output here, you can actually see what's happening because HMR is being logged to the console. And you can see that there was an update. And if you really want to take a look at exactly what happened, what was updated, you can go into the platforms folder, the test 54 NG, which is the name of my project. And you can see the same things here. You have the bundle and you also have your update files, the JavaScript files and the JSON metadata files. All right, let's close that up. Now we're still in Angular. Let's change this item service.ts file. And I'm going to just, uh, let's bring this up here. I'm going to change the name of that first player to Terstegen2. Okay, so that was extremely fast. That was really cool. I changed the code. That's the TypeScript file. And the app did not restart. It just changed it in place. So that's really awesome. I'm going to just do one more thing here. I'm going to scroll this list down a little bit and then change that player's name to three. Okay, so the scroll position of the list gets reset, but that's still extremely fast. So you're ready to look at view now. Got to change the color here. There's green for view and we have a green view test project right here. I'm going to go to my console, restart the view app. Now, before I do that, actually, I'm going to terminate that. Let's go into view and you can see that NS config is there. So we're going to work this one a little bit backwards. Use legacy workflow is set to false, of course. Let's set that to true and see how the view experience was before this update. TNS run iOS. Let's see what happens. I think you might already know what's going to happen if I do this. Oh, look at that. We got an error message. So when you're building view applications before version 5.4 came out, you needed to include the dash dash bundle flag. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. Only the Webpack builds worked. So dash dash bundle. Let's include that and let's build the view application now. OK, cool. So there is our view template, the hello world template for view. And let's go in here and change some code. So I'm going to open up a component, the home component right there. And I'm going to just add a one here after app. So the app restarted. OK, you saw that. Now, what happens if I change something in the markup? Let's say I change the text of the label in the nav bar there to home too. OK, so the app also restarted. And this was a real downside to doing native script view is because your app restarts whatever changes you make if you are using the view single file components, the dot view files. Now here is the best thing for native script view developers. I'm going to change use legacy workflow to false. Let's head back out here. You do need to restart the app, but now we don't need that bundle flag. So I'm going to say TNS run iOS 
no bundle flag. And this will work. Look at that. We're getting a Webpack build with hot module replacement. Right there, it says hot module replacement enabled. And let's check this out. So we're going to go back here to the home.view file. I'm going to change this to a two. <gasps> Look at that. Wow, that was fast. I can't believe this. This is so awesome. That is incredibly fast. The app doesn't restart. And not only that, but it's so much faster than it used to be. So that's me changing the JavaScript code, by the way. And of course, if I change anything in the markup, the behavior is going to be the same. So there's the label text. And that was extremely fast. It changed without rebooting and it was super fast. I'm just really impressed with this really good job to the native script team for implementing this. This is going to be super handy. So that was HMR. We're going to be looking at some more features that came out with version 5.4 in the next few videos, including shadows. I also have another shadow trick coming up. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. It's really going to help me out. I make this content for free using my own time just so that I can deliver the best news to you folks. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.